Paul Traveller and I'm back for another video. I'm sorry guys I haven't posted in a while due to not being able to go to, to games because playoff games you need to have a, be a membership and some of them you have to pay for or some of them you have to qualify to go to too many to enough games to go up because because and some of the teams that I did want to go I just was working. So today we're gonna do reaction to the Premier League table. At the start of the year I posted a picture on my Instagram page with the predictions of how I thought the league would end at the start of the year. However, some of them didn't go so well. So let's see how terribly I did now. Let's, and this year we're starting with the Premier League. I'm gonna have my table and on this side, I'm gonna have the real life table. So now let's see who finished in the bottom three, in my opinion. So guys, my bottom three was Bournemouth, Fulham and Brentford, but it was actually Southampton, Leeds and Leicester. The reason why I thought these three teams will go down, uh, Bournemouth, I definitely didn't expect them to stay up because they didn't assign anyone that good and they just, I didn't like them in the championship last year, so I think I didn't think they would go up. Fulham, they did make some decent signings, however, I didn't expect Mitrovic to bag so many goals. So that's why I expected them to go down. And Brentford because Ivan Tony was getting a ban, which he has got now. And they lost Christian Eriksen, who in my opinion was their playmaker. So I didn't expect them to replace that. However, I was very wrong. Yeah. And then this was the actual top three. The team that really surprised me was Leicester. But at the end of the day, looking at it, they did make sense. Like Southampton were one man team with James Ward Prowse. However, because of the new Serbian owners, I thought they would do a lot better. Leeds just can't defend to save their lives. Plus, Jesse March was never a good manager. However, they started the season well. I kind of had hopes for Aronson and um, Tyler Adams. And Rodrigo was on a scoring form. However, Raf missing Rafinha and Calvin Phillips was just. Too much. And yeah, Leeds did concede most of the goals. But Leicester for me was the most surprising one at the start of the year. Because if you see where I'll have them, it was quite surprising how where I expected them. However, when I made this, they still had Kasper Schmeichel, who they didn't replace. And they had Danny Ward being goal, who literally has never been, has always been a second goalkeeper. Last time he had a proper season was when Huddersfield got promoted to the Premier League. And then they had Daniel Everson. So yeah, if they, I think if they signed a goalkeeper, they actually would have stayed up. However, it was too late. And yeah, just look around them. But yeah, and Madison was wanting to go. So that didn't help really that much. And yeah, Vardy, age is getting catch up to him. He was more injured and playing less at game time. Now... Let's add up 17, 16, and 15th place. So, yeah, this was my 17, 16, 15. So, I thought Leeds would just stay up. However, the reason for me, I thought they would stay up because I thought they would spend more money on better players. And as I said, Aronson and Rodrigo started the season well. So, I thought they'll stay up. Forrest, I had hope. Um, plus, one of my, I watched the Bundesliga. So, Taiva Avani was a good player, in my opinion. And he wasn't starting well, but yeah, they luckily at the end of the season, he started scoring goals and he scored some crucial goals against Arsenal, Chelsea, to make them stay up. And then, yeah, Southampton. I thought James Ward Prowse would carry them to 15th. But this is the table how it actually finished. Everton finished 17th, which was very low for them. They literally stayed up on the last day. Winning 1-0 against Bournemouth. Forest, who were going down, but then they had a good form at the end of the year. Plus, what helped them out was their home record. Like, they they drew against Man City at home. They beat Chelsea. They beat Arsenal at home. So their home, the city ground was a fortress. I've been to the ground, and the atmosphere is amazing there. And then, yeah, Bournemouth. A team that lost 9-0 in the early in the season, stayed 15th. But yeah, shout out to 
Bournemouth finishing 15. Hope they don't get the second season syndrome. And hopefully they'll do another good season. However, I might have them in the bottom three again next year. But we'll see. Now, let's go from 15th to 11th. So yeah, this is my 15th to 11th. 15th Aston Villa. 14th Everton. 13th Brighton. 2nd Crystal Palace. And 11th Wolves. And if the actual one was 15th was West Ham. 14th was Wolves. 13th was Chelsea. 12th was Palace and 11th was Fulham. Not gonna lie, looking back at Villa, finishing 15th was my, a weird prediction for me because I, looking back at this, I definitely expected them to do better than Palace and Brighton. But yeah, um, I don't know why I predicted them so low or so high. But yeah, I had 14th Everton. I thought Pickford and their defence was going to do quite well. And 13th, I had Brighton. Yeah, I am actually surprised I predicted Brighton so well. Because usually Brighton, the team, I don't expect to do well. But they do do well. So no, but I had them 13th, which I thought they were overachieving. However, I was still wrong. Palace, 12th. They finished 12th. Um, I really rate Ebriche Eze and Michael Alesi. And Wolves, 11th. Um... Yeah, they just have Ruben Neves, Joseph Sai in the team. I expected them to do a lot better this year. Looking back at this, I mostly, like Wolves did, I have them finish 11. However, I did expect it to be a tight race. And I expected Wolves to challenge for Europa League or Conference League. But, yeah. Uh, they're in the Europa League. Sorry, Europa Conference Final. For me, they're having, they had a good season. You could tell when they got stayed up, they were just focusing on that. However, at the start of the year, a lot of players were out of form. Like, Michael and Tony was awful. Jared Bowen, literally, people, he was one of the first names to go to Qatar. And then by the end of it, by the start of the tournament, he was nowhere in the conversation for it. Wolves, 14th. Um, goals. Goals, 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 goals. They had no goals. Like, they signed Diego Costa, who's very old. And Raul Jimenez, yes, I know if he's had a head injury, so I don't want to be too harsh to him, but he is kind of one of the worst players in Wolves right now. Is that controversial? Maybe. Then, 12th Chelsea. Uh, less said about Chelsea's season, <laughs> the better. They, like, yeah. Tommy, they sacked Tommy Tuchel because they thought he was underperforming. And they finished 13th. Um, and then they had Frank Lampard, who had an awful run. Graham Potter, who everyone thought was one of the greatest managers. However, it turned out Brighton is just them. And yeah, then their signings haven't been the best. Like, they signed Mudrix, um, Koulibaly, who's too old. Thiago Silva's too old. Mendy had a howler of a season. And yeah, just a lot of Chelsea players did not perform. I hope next year Chelsea will sort it out. As I'm filming this, I'm pretty sure Chelsea just announced Pochettino as their manager as well. Then 12th, finished Crystal Palace. They were not looking that good, but then, because everyone loved Patrick Fiora at the start of the year, but then they sacked him. They were so upset, and Roy Hodgson took over, but Roy Hodgson made them stay up. And then Fulham at 11. However, Fulham could should have could have been a lot higher if that FA Cup game against Man United didn't happen and Mitrovic got an eight man game ban and then yeah. They knew where they're safe so they stopped caring. But still very good season for Fulham. Well done for not going down, so yeah. If they can keep it up for next year, who knows what happened. Maybe European football push next year for Fulham. Now let's move on to the top. 9, 10 to 6. Hey guys, I've just realised I've been doing it wrong. So Fulham and where Wolves are, they actually finished 10th. So let's, we're doing 9, 8 and 7 now actually guys. So I predicted less to finish 9. As I said, I still, when I did this prediction, I expected them to have Kasper Schmeichel. Or at least a decent goalkeeper. However, they didn't. Plus I, 
I've, I still have faith in Patton Dacca, but yeah, he's not been the best. I had Newcastle eight finishing eighth. Probably, yeah, that was a bad prediction, however. Just, but then I expected them maybe to finish highest top six. But yeah, they finished a lot higher. And I had West Ham finishing seventh. Um, I didn't expect Bowen to have such a bad form. And yeah, European football affected them a lot, in my opinion. So yeah. And then I had Brentford ninth. Brentford actually finished ninth. Um, Brentford actually finished ninth. And yeah, Tony was still playing for them until the last week of the fixtures. And Thomas Franks is just a very good manager. And their program is just is very good. Like they replaced Ericsson, who went to Man United. And then yeah, it just was a good year for Brentford. Keep it up, guys. Let's hope you can stabilise now. They were so unlucky for not making European football. And then, yeah. Then, the Spurs, who finished 8th, which was a terrible season. How can you have have a go Harry Kane, who is your main striker, scored 30 plus goals, and you only finish 8th. Like, by the end of the year, they were just playing, sh like, awful. I don't know. Spurs, you need to sort it out. Like... You need, a, you need a manager and you need like hope for Harry Kane because Harry Kane, if I was Harry Kane, I would not stay in a team that can't, can't make European football, who can't finish a league place, who finishes a league below Aston Villa, Brighton. It just, you can't finish in the top eight and have Harry Kane as your striker. Like, come on Spurs, get it together. And then to a happier story, Aston Villa who finished seventh, they sacked Steven Gerrard and they got Una Emery in charge who didn't have a, a good reputation in England. However, now Villa fans love him and Watkins was scoring a lot of goals. So yeah. And the person who I thought would do well for Villa is Philip Coutinho and he had a shocker guys. And yeah, shout out to Villa to making it to the Europa Conference League. First time in European football for a long time. I can't remember the last time they were in European football. Any Villa fans, please let me know when. But now, let's move into our Europa League teams this year. And there you go, guys. I predicted Man United and Chelsea to get European football. And it was actually Brighton and Liverpool were going to see in Europa League. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Um, both <laughs> Liverpool and Brighton unexpected in European football. In Europa League next year. Um, so, yeah, Man United, 6th. No one believed them. Actually, when I was speaking to my friends, I said that Man United was going to finish top 4. So, my friends, who actually probably knew this prediction, are looking like, what the hell did I put them 6th? I have no idea, guys. I think I got too much influenced. But now, nah, Ten Hag had an amazing year. I expected Ronaldo to back, to be fair, but everything know what happened with Ronaldo... And yeah, they don't even have Ronaldo. Yeah, at the start of the year, Man United had Ronaldo. But now he's playing in Saudi Arabia. And then he's had an interview with Piers Morgan. So, what a year this has been in England, guys. But yeah, Man United, shout out to Ten Hag. He did well. But yeah, um, I just thought the top five would be a lot better. And Chelsea, fifth. I expected him. Like, Koulibaly has always was my dream transfer in FIFA, however... Let's be real, he's quite old now. And yeah, Thiago Silva's getting very old as well. But I thought they would still be very good. I didn't expect Mendy to have such a shocker as well. And yeah. And goals. Just so and I didn't expect them to suck Tommy Tuchel's. But in real life, it was Brighton and Liverpool who finished sixth and fifth. Yeah, Brighton. Just an amazing story, guys. They thought Graham Potter was the man. And when Graham Potter, they would slimmer down the league. But no, they lost a couple of games. The Zerbi sorted them out. And they rose. They, The only reason they weren't in Champions League conversation was because Liverpool went on a massive run. And they kind of knew, realised they would finish sixth. So they then they had up and down results. Like, I'm pretty sure they lost to... Leicester 5-1, like not that long ago. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it was one of them teams, or Everton. 
So, yeah. But we'll, we'll see, guys. How will Brighton do next year with European football? And a lot of players that will be leaving, like Alex McAllister and Mitoma, will go to bigger clubs. But, yeah. Next year, I do feel worried for Brighton because too many fixtures. We'll, we saw what happened to West Ham this year. The, will it happen to Brighton? We'll see. And how will do you think Brighton will do in Europa League, actually, guys? Will they make it out of the group? Or will they or will they go further, guys? Let me know. However, will they make the finals? Will they make the finals? However, if they do, most likely they will place Liverpool. Um, Liverpool, what happened to Liverpool this year? Um, the team just couldn't play for the start of the year. Like, Trent was awful. Like, he was one of the worst players in the team. Van Dijk got injured, and after injury, he was never the same. And Darwin was a mess. However, they did win 9 0 this year, and then they went and saved their season at the end of the year and went on a crazy run to almost make the Champions League football. However, it was too little, too late. But if you think about it, guys, Liverpool, for the past four, three years before this season, had to be at their best. Like, they scored 90 plus points or 88. Like, 85 plus points. Normally, you win this league. Just but Man City have been setting the standards. Which are crazy and unbelievably to to beat or break. Which you will literally I will speak tomorrow, but more about this year. But yeah, like of course you're gonna just kind of like imagine you're having like you're the underdog and you're fighting and you're fighting, but like and you're having a a twelve round of a boxing match, and like like you have three four matches. And all of them, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're so close. However, you lose by the last decision on a final day. Like, how heartbreaking would that be? And of course, one fight, you will lose. I just give up, you know? Sort of, and you're like, what is it there for? So I hope Liverpool will just take a year out. This year was their off year. Next year, European football can rest the team a bit. While Man City focus on the Champions League. And yeah. I'm sure they will finish a lot better than fifth. Who knows? Maybe they'll win the title. However, let's move on now to it. Four, three, and second place. So yeah, guys, this is my fourth, third, and second. So I had Spurs finishing fourth, Arsenal finishing third, and Liverpool finishing second. However, Newcastle finished fourth. Third was Manchester United, and second was Arsenal. So yeah, Spurs... I expected Kane to have a good year. I expected Conte to bring his style to defensive football to Spurs, where they sort out the defence. However, that never happened. So, yeah. Fourth place. Then, Arsenal third. Um, Everyone had high hopes for Arsenal. Arsenal, I thought me predicting them third was probably going to be about right. But, yeah. Everyone just performed like Jesus performed. And yeah, everyone was playing well. Jesus, Saka, Saliba. Like, who was on loan? He was on loan for two years, guys, I must say. And Ben White playing in him and right back just was amazing. Ra Ramsdale, who wasn't that good. Well, he was good. Don't get me wrong, guys. He was good, but he just made a lot of costly mistakes, like against Liverpool and against Southampton. That did cost him, in my opinion, the league. But I'm uh, as an Arsenal fan... You still should be proud. Yeah, I had Liverpool second. I thought they would go for it again. Like, I thought it would could be a three-way fight for the title. But, yeah, Liverpool just didn't have the power. It looked good for them in the Community Shield where they beat Man City. But, drawing first game to Fulham 2-2. And then losing to a Man United side who was playing awful. Just wasn't the best for them. And as you said, Van Dijk, their captain, getting injured. And in real life, Newcastle. Up the tune, guys. Shout out to all the Newcastle fans who will be going to Champions League football next year. Yeah, they, they just had an amazing year, guys. Like, 
yeah, just a lot happened. They made the Carabao Cup final. Unfortunately, they lost. So which I for like Nick Pope, amazing goalkeeper. I've always rated Nick Pope. He was actually an ex-York City keeper, if you didn't know. You had him on loan. So yeah, shout out to Nick, Nick Pope. Then Sven Botman, who I always expected to be well from. Lille, he came. Trippier, still amazing. I thought he would be too old, not going to lie. And then when they signed Alexander Isak, a young striker from FIFA back when I used to play two, three years ago. Career mode. Yeah, just an amazing team. Plus Callum Wilson performed. And Bruno Gamarish and Joe Linton is a beautiful de duo. However, next year, I feel like Newcastle is not going to have that well of a season. Why? Because they're in Champions League. If they were not in Champions League, I could see it again. However, Newcastle have money, so they will invest. However, shout out to Eddie Howe for making it though as well. And then third, Man United. How the hell did Man United finish third, guys? Uh, because of Rashford. Just Rashford. He just, after the World Cup, Rashford just was like, I'm Marcus Rashford, and I'm just going to score and do well. And yeah, the way they started the season was lost 4-2 to Brighton, lost 4-0 to Brentford. The fans wanted the Glazers out. They were boycotting everything. However... Everything. And they lost 7-0 to Liverpool, guys. This year, they lost 7-0 to Liverpool and they finished third. And all the Ronaldo drama, like, how the hell did this team actually finish third, guys? I don't know. And they won the Carabao Cup. And they're in the FA Cup semi-final, guys. Like, everything I just told you, it's like, how the hell do you expect Man United to actually finish third? And then, yeah, Arsenal, second. Um, Arsenal fans... You should be proud of your year, guys. Uh, I know a lot of you will not be because, yes, you were leading the league for 93% of the season and you bottled it before the last game of the season. The league was over. Yes, that is very bad, guys. <laughs> However, well, actually, before the second game, because Man City had to play Brighton as well, which was a game in hand. But again, we don't talk about it. Uh, but... And yeah, you lost 4-4. You drew 4-4 to Southampton, which, yeah, not the best, guys. However, you still should be proud, guys. Like, finishing second, making Champions League football after all these years. Just, yeah, guys. Um, Have fun. Enjoy Champions League football, guys. And maybe give it uh, next year. And then, of course, guys, the moment you've been waiting for, the team that finished top of the league... As I predicted, and as the Premier League actually finished, was Man City. Was it, guys, anything to say? Yes, of course it wasn't unpredictable because, yeah, like when Arsenal were eight point clears and everyone was saying that no one's ever lost the league in this point, no one's ever lost the league in this point, that Man City would win the league. Yeah, no one expected that. I did, though, I still did. One of my friends owes me a fiver from that, but yeah. And then, yeah, Haaland just is a machine. He's a robot from Leeds. Uh, he just scores so many goals, but yeah. And yeah, um, why well, I thought Man City would have a close, tight league because of Liverpool, because of how the season started as well, Community Shield. Then they went on a bad form, like they drew to Nottingham Forest, guys. The Brentford pulled a double over them, guys. And then, yeah, just Man City didn't seem like themselves. However, they managed to pull it. And they are your champions of the English Premier League. Um, yeah, but this year was still fun, guys. Not going to lie, every year has still been fun. Like, yes, Man City have just won the league three years in a row. However, this team, this year, how Man City came back was amazing. Last year, how they it went to the last fixture where they were 2-0 down to Villa and how they came back. Man City... Yes, they're winning the league and it's the same winner. However, it's fun. It's still very close. And it's pushing a lot of teams to new heights that you never expect them to reach. So, yeah. Shout out to Man City. Shout out to all of the team. And, yeah, they've still got a Champions League final to look for, guys. Will they win it? Um, We'll see, guys. We'll wait. You'll have to wait for another Champions League prediction video, guys. But there you go, guys. This is the, my tables com comparison.
thank you for watching the video. Let me know which team surprised you the most this year and which team disappointed you the most this year. And yeah, I will see you guys in a future video. Also guys, if this video hits 10 likes, as soon as it hits 10 likes, I will produ produce the championship prediction videos. So don't worry guys, there'll be more reaction videos coming. Ciao, ciao for now.